In this Figma tutorial, we're going to create an interactive send button with a feedback to signal that the action has been completed. You get two states, one with this send icon with this little arrow and then another one where you have a check mark and we're going to set this up in such a way that we get this nice animation. As always, if you'd like to save time and support the channel, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can download the source file for this project. And now let's get started with this interactive component. I'm going to start with using the text tool by pressing T on my keyboard and I'm going to type in send. I'll zoom in and select this text object, press shift A to add an auto layout around this. I'm going to name this send button and I'll create background for this. Let's go for like blue and make the text white. Then of course we're going to adjust the paddings over here under auto layout and also round corners to Eight. over here under the frame section. Now we need to create the two icons that will define this button, which is the send icon, the little arrow, and the check mark. To create the arrow, I'm gonna use the rectangle tool to create a square, and I'm gonna make this square outlined like this by enabling the stroke and going for three in the stroke width, and then actually making this white while also at the same time darkening the background because we can't really see it properly. So let's go for like this. Um, actually, I think it would be better to use a polygon tool, a triangle to achieve this. Yeah, that's better. So again, I'm gonna create a stroke, remove the fill and make the stroke white while also keeping them around it, right? So you can see that when I go to advanced stroke, I, I get the option to kind of soften these sharp edges like this. I'm gonna remove this square and then select this triangle, press enter and then add a new vertex like this. I clicked on one of the lines, right? I'll then press down over here or press enter on my keyboard and adjust the size overall proportions of this new arrow. I think we could go for 18 seems about right. I think this size and the, this stroke width best fits our text. So let's keep that at two and 18 by 18. I'm gonna move this outside again use my pen tool to create a line that's going across this arrow, make this white as well, and two pixels as well. I'm gonna group this by pressing Command G with all of this being selected, and I'm gonna name this Send Arrow, let's say. And now I'm again gonna use the pen tool to create a check mark like this, just a very, very small one. Let's go for 15 by 10. I think we could create rounded endings again and also go to advanced stroke to create a round join so that it corresponds visually to our previous icon. I'm gonna turn this to a component, name this component arrow and then turn this into a component as well by selecting it and going over here and name this um, check mark and then I'm gonna select both of these and go over here to, to click combine as variants. So we have a component one, we're gonna rename this component to icon, and we have now an icon component with properties arrow and check mark that we can then reuse somewhere else. And in our case, that's gonna be inside this button. The reason why I am turning this into a component actually is to be easily able to change, for example, the arrow. So let's say you wanna make it you know, round it like this for some reason. We want to make sure that we can easily make the changes like in one single place that will then update whenever we use this specific icon. I'm now going to select this send button as well and create a component from this as well. It's going to have two states. So I have a send button with default and then send states, right? I'm going to also go over to the first one and add some extra padding on the right side and specifically 28 pixels. So I'm gonna type in plus 28. And in this case, I'm gonna add some extra padding on the left side, which is gonna be also 28. So let's go over here to type in 24 plus 28 as well. So you can kind of see that I'm preparing space for these icons to be placed in here. I'll then go over here to assets. We use this icon, drag and drop it over here inside this first variant. I'm going to use this icon over here, this button, to set this to absolute position. Right now you can see that even though 
um, it's an auto layout, you can move it anywhere. And that's exactly what we need. We're gonna make sure this is constrained to the right and to the center. And we're gonna do something similar here. I'm gonna click and drag this icon here to the second variant. Again, absolute position. I'm gonna turn this to check mark and then center this vertically and move that to the left. I'm gonna position it to a position that feels right. And you can kind of see we could use like a little bit stronger check mark so four pixels i'll set this up over here under the icon component and then remove this instance and now we are actually ready to start prototyping this before we do that i'll just change the second state color from blue to green and also change the sand to sand to signal that this is complete i'll also add a shadow by going to effects with both of these selected and put in under blur like 10 and under the Y coordinates like 10 as well. Maybe increase the blur. Let's see what works. And in the first case, I'm gonna sample a color from the background, reduce the opacity and same here. So now we get, you know, this kind of situation where you have shadows corresponding with the actual button color. I'm gonna also Right now select, actually we're, we forgot about one thing. I'm gonna select the icon component instance and then copy and paste that here. And we're gonna move that all the way outside this frame to be approximately, approximately here, so minus 30. Then I'm gonna select this icon. I'm gonna actually rename this icon. Icon underscore check. And this one icon underscore arrow. Same here, we're, we have to keep the naming consistent icon underscore check and then copy this arrow over here to the second variant as well and again move that outside the frame like this right and then also we're going to make sure that when we select these variants we check clip content that way these icons that are outside these frames are going to disappear now let's go over to prototype select the first state connect that with the second state and say on click change to smart animate and the, and the easing will be set to bouncy, right? It's gonna take also 300 milliseconds or maybe let's go for 500. And when we click this again, we wanna make sure it goes back to the initial state. So on click change to property default, smart animate bouncy and it's also gonna take 800 milliseconds. We're gonna test this now and see if that's too slow, too quick and if everything works. So frame tool 1000 by 600 and then just rename this test frame and place this new send button onto our frame. And you can see we should probably reduce the shadow or at least make it more blurry. So let's go for 2030 or 24, move this down and same here, 24 and 10. All right, maybe reduce the opacity as well to 24. I'm gonna select the frame, launch it. And before I test this, I'll also make sure that both of these text objects, send and send, have the same name. So I'm gonna select both of these, press Shift R, and then rename that to button text, right? Press Enter. And now when we go over to the presentation mode and I click the button, this happens. I get a nice animation where the text moves as well as the icon. When I click again, it's gonna revert back. Again, I click send and it moves to the right side. And when I click again, it's gonna reset. So again, if you'd like to reuse this in your own projects, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And also leave a like if you found this tutorial useful and if it helped you. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.